If you want to paint some realistic and natural looking waves on water, you need to know two main things. The first thing is, what is the shape of a wave? Waves have a basic shape that all of the bigger shapes are made of. So waves have high points and low points. So when I say wave, you might think of just one little spike in the water. But uh, another sense of the, of the word is a pattern. So you could go like this, you know, and this could be a wave. High points, low points. So this is commonly called the crest. This is commonly called the trough, but I like to call them smiles and frowns. This is the smile, this is the frown. And in water, the smiles are almost always wider than the frowns. You can see that my frowns are a little bit smaller than my smiles. The important thing right now is that we follow this basic shape. So remember this, you know, like some kind of a bird or something where it's getting wider as it goes down, skinnier as it goes up. Think of that as one wave. Now watch what happens when I have a wave in front of a wave. Now, if this were a small body of water, you probably wouldn't see these real sharp corners because the waves don't have such abrupt changes. All the, the water has surface tension, so all of the corners are very rounded where, where the water is trying to even itself out. So it keeps everything real rounded. So it might be more like this if it's on a real small scale, a lot more than if it was on, on a big scale you'd have it, the corners rounded. So I'll just round them by pulling this light color in and losing that sharp corner. Now look at this resulting shape. Notice that this smile, because it's, it's wider, the bottom edge of the stroke is not at the same curve as the top edge of the stroke. This is more level and the result of that is my wave is like a little mountain. It, it has a flatter bottom than the top. The top has more of an arch. Now that could be at any extreme. It might be just barely arced. It might be stretched out real long, but typically this base has a more level uh, bottom than this top. Where I have this line scrunched down, well, I have sharper angles that are swooping back. So this trough right here may never reach a sharp angle where it's tilting away from my eyes. And as I've explained before, as the surface of water tilts toward me, like I'm looking through a window, I see less reflection. But as it tilts away from me, I begin to see more and more reflection. And it's gradual, it's not a sudden point where you, where you suddenly see reflection. So that's why these lines taper. Well, because of that, this is a more sudden curve wrapping around the point of this wave, where down near the base is a lot more of a gradual curve. Okay, so then my bright colors still are not in this whole thing. They're still, my brightest area is still right here on the edge of this wave, on the edge of this one, on the edge of this one coming down, and this one coming down, and then it's not so bright down here in the middle, but then it might get brighter and brighter as it gets just to this very little edge. And just this little tiny bright edge can actually give a lot of depth and perspective to the, the overall shape of your waves as they are interconnecting. When you have that consistent pattern of, of that color getting brighter, <clears throat> right at the top of this, it causes it to look like it suddenly swoops up and it has a, that sharper little tip on it. So I'll make a big wave now and I'm going to use the exact same pattern that I just showed you with that simpler picture. And I'm going to make sure that each stroke has that same pattern to it. See how it tapers on the ends? And then I try to make it so that it has this gradient fading upward because that causes it to look like it's swooping, like this one stroke is a little miniature trough. And so I'm going to have my little smiles and I'm going to connect the end of it with 
some point on the midsection of another, you know, or I can do them end to end like this, see? So now I just kind of did a miniature version of that whole picture with just a few brush strokes. All right, so I can do several of these. And let's just not make the edge of this wave completely straight. Let's make it ramp up a little bit. Now I'm going to use a lot of that same kind of stroke to build the same shape that I just painted. So you can see that this is like one big stroke made out of many little ones of the same shape. Water gradually tilts away from you and you gradually see more of the reflection. So there's not going to be a sudden point where I see reflection unless that really is just a completely flat face on that wave. So I'll probably want to put a few like this getting dimmer. So you're seeing less of the reflection. So I'll make them smaller. There's less and less of that angle that will allow you to see a reflection as it curves around into what would be like a window to the deep water. Let's make another one here. Now, down here, I'm going to have another big smile that's just like this one. So this maybe is the top. So this is a frown right here. So I'm going to make it brighter. It's brighter because it's tilting way away from my eyes. It's swooping like this. So this angle is the sharpest angle away from where I'm looking and it's facing the most toward all of the sky back there that it would be reflecting. Now let's say that down here is the, the tip of another wave. So we'll make a little frown little frowny face right here and I'm gonna make sure it's a little bit brighter than the rest of that smile that's right above it so when I make big waves out of little waves I can have many little waves many little crests within the low spot I can have a bunch of of little waves you know I have waves within waves is what I'm trying to say and that's just because I'm just using the same brush stroke and it just naturally creates that look of waves by, by the way I connect the strokes together and keeping the tops of the waves skinny and then widening everything as it gets into those troughs. Let's say this wave is uh, 20 feet away. Well, if I go halfway to my horizon, so right about here, then that distance, whatever it was here, is double at that halfway mark. So that means that it's 40 feet way right here, and the rule of halves and doubles says that that needs to be only half of the width and half of the height of this wave. So roughly, it does not need to be exact, roughly that big. We have this size at this distance, okay, and then that means that halfway to the horizon it's going to be half again. So I have roughly this size right here. And then when I get halfway to the horizon, it's going to be roughly that size. OK. And then halfway to the horizon again is going to be half that size. Now I have a good guide. So these are just going to be tiny little guys up here. The technique is not what matters. What matters is understanding what the natural look is and how your strategy of getting to that proper shape and color placement is going to be. Now that I have this, I'm going to show you a little bit more on making the waves more complex and adding other colors to make it look more like translucent water with light shining in it.